I'm Marty Stauffer. The outside world would be a mystery to every living species without sensory organs. Humans rely on their vision more than any other sense, and consequently, our eyesight is well developed. In fact, few animals can see as well as we can. All creatures see the world differently because nature has provided them with special adaptations to suit their particular way of life. For some animals, eyesight is secondary to other senses. But for most, it is essential. We'll take a look at a wide variety of eyes, from the simple to the complex, and see why we can learn where a creature lives, when and what it eats, and how much it depends on sight for survival just by looking at its eyes. Come along as we discover why the eyes have it. Here in our desert southwest, a beautiful but elusive cat called the ocelot goes in search of a meal. An ocelot is about twice the size of a house cat, and like most predators, has eyes located on the front of its head. The harvest mouse, like most prey species, has eyes on the sides of its head. The position of the ocelot's eyes creates overlapping vision, which allows it to judge distance and depth more accurately. By contrast, the tiny forager's eye placement gives it a greater field of vision, which makes it easier to spot a nearby predator. The larger and swifter cat wins this contest between hunter and hunted. With winter fast approaching, these Alaskan black bears are preparing for their winter hibernation. 
A mother bear will hibernate with her months old cubs, but come spring, the yearling cubs will head out on their own. Surprisingly, bears have poor distance vision. Although they will eat meat if the chance arises, the main staple of their diet is vegetation. Therefore, their eyes are adapted to see well at short distances. To evaluate distant objects, the large omnivores rely on their hearing and smelling abilities. Let's watch what happens when this mother bear catches the scent of two wildlife watchers, one with a camera and one with a rifle for protection. She's behind the tree. I got her. Stay with her. There she I'll comes. Follow her. She's coming at us a little, though. She's charging, man. Okay, get your gun ready. I've got it ready. I won't shoot unless she gets too close. Okay, don't shoot. I want to go as long as we can. This is great. Here she comes. Josh, she's coming fast. Oh, oh, oh. don't shoot. No. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. I'm going to have to I scared her. I scared her. Well, I'm still filming her. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm filming her. I was about to run. <laughs> Stay right on her. I think she's going to turn around. I hope she doesn't come again. If she keeps coming. I'll leave the camera running. All right. We're out of here. She's stopping now. I don't... Where are the cubs? Behind the trees, I think. Okay, I'll film her as long as I can if she charges again. There she goes. She's running away, I think. I hope she's going away. Man, that was too close. You stay right on us. That was too close. That is great footage. I can't believe it. Whose idea was that? <laughs> Your idea. <laughs> For the last time. The position of a mammal's eyes on its head reveals each species as either predator or prey. Most mammals, whether predator or prey, are naturally colored to avoid being seen. It is commonly believed that hunted species, like this white-tailed deer, see more clearly at dawn and dusk because their eyes see best in dim light. Nonetheless, a well-camouflaged cottontail, blending into the brush, escapes the whitetail's sight. Without moving its head, the cottontail can still view 280 degrees of its surroundings. It can see and not be seen, which gives the whitetail quite a surprise. Let's see that again. Though we know the whitetail poses no threat, the cottontail takes no chances and bounds away. To we humans, the night is a blanket of darkness, but the raccoon can see as plain as day. Most mammals are active both day and night, but those that are nocturnal have big eyes with large pupils. Like the raccoon, the opossum is also a nighttime neighborhood scavenger and often raids trash cans in its nightly search for food. Nocturnal creatures need oversized eye openings to let in all available light. 
since there is one-tenth the natural light at night as during the day. Although the raccoon and the possum have similar eyes and habits, they are by no means friends, which becomes apparent when their paths cross. The eyes of a great horned owl are even more specially adapted to night vision. This nighttime flyer has overlapping vision, similar to that of many mammalian predators. Although an owl cannot move its huge eyes inside their sockets, it can turn its head all the way around to see behind. An owl swallows its meal whole and later regurgitates a pellet of bones, hair, and any other indigestible matter. The owl's night vision is so exceptional it probably sees better at night than we humans do during the day. This golden eagle has the keenest eyesight in the animal kingdom. Seeing the world about eight times more clearly than through human eyes, this regal hunter will have no trouble seeing a hare at a distance of over a mile. A rather unique feature of bird's eyes is their nictitating membrane. This is a third eyelid used for keeping the eye moist and clean of debris. The opaque membrane also serves as a shield to protect the eye from the brightness of the sun or from the lunges of feeding chicks. Most birds see only shortwave light, which are those colors that appear on the blue side of the color spectrum. Like birds, many reptiles also have a third eyelid. But unlike birds, turtles see only long wave light or colors on the red end of the color spectrum. The most ancient of all reptiles, they see very poorly in dim light and are virtually blind at night. Like many animals, their vision is geared to their eating needs. Therefore, turtles see well at short distances. The Anoli lizard is a cousin of the turtle and has eyes which can move in two separate directions. The Anoli's eyes constantly swivel around as it scans its leafy world for food. This colorful little hunter has eye muscles which allow each eye to point 180 degrees forwards and backwards, as well as directly downwards and partially upwards. In fact, 
only something perched directly on top of its head could avoid detection from the Anoli's all-seeing eyes. The largest lizard of all, the alligator, is found in the swamplands of the south. The armor-plated armadillo shares its lush habitat. With eyes on top of its head, the alligator glides almost undetected through the murky water. Considering its eyesight is so poor, this armadillo was lucky to escape the jaws of the hungry gator. Because it spends so much time digging underground, the armadillo has little need for sophisticated eyesight. Oblivious to the danger, the armadillo continues to dig as these hungry snappers wait outside for a second chance. leopard frog, like the alligator, also has eyes located on the top of its head. Although its eyes are large, it's unable to see form, but is keenly aware of motion, like this approaching cricket. Frogs have what is called a snapping zone, which essentially extends to the length of their tongue. If any prospective meal, like a juicy cricket, wanders into this area, it will be tongued. When swallowing a meal, a frog will literally push its eyes back into its head to help push the food down its throat and into its gullet. As this four-eyed frog shows, eyes are not just for seeing. When this amphibian is threatened, it quickly sticks its bottom in the air. In a split second, the defenseless frog transforms into a fierce face that often intimidates an aggressor. Like the four-eyed frog, this moth also has large eye spots on its hind wings, which prove useful in scaring away hungry birds. Spiders are also creatures with multiple eyes. They have six or eight strategically placed to detect motion. Spiders are either weavers or hunters. Weaving spiders rely on the webs they spin, not their eyes, to catch food. On the other hand, hunting spiders depend largely on their eyes when stalking prey. Some hunting spiders communicate through visual signs, like this jumping spider, and this wolf spider, these spiders can tell by their various signals that they are competitors and not prospective mates. So, because they don't see eye to eye, they retreat in separate directions.
As this wolf spider continues on its way, it encounters an unsuspecting beetle. With lightning speed, it attacks. Hunting spiders can see only about a foot away and will not jump at their prey until it's within less than an inch. All flying insects, like this dragonfly, have compound eyes. These unique windows on the world are capable of seeing into the ultraviolet range. So a flower that would look like this to a human eye would look like this to a dragonfly or bee eye. Hemispheric in shape, their eyes are extremely sensitive to patterns and movements. Each eye is made up of microscopic particles which are placed together in a honeycomb pattern. A dragonfly can have up to 30,000 tiny facets in each eye. This is more than any other insect. By comparison, a honeybee has about 10,000 per eye and a worker ant has only nine. During the summer, bees can be found in any nearby garden collecting nectar and pollen from flowers. To bees, humans look something like this. Even if you're curious, be careful not to get too close, as these teeny creatures are easily annoyed. As stated, bees also have compound eyes, which are specially adapted to see ultraviolet. So what might appear to the human eye a dull yellow flower would be a bright ultraviolet beacon to a bee, marking the passageway to the nectar. Flying insects aren't the only animals to have these unique eyes. Crustaceans, below the water's surface, also have them. The crayfish eye is made up of thousands of facets. Unlike the hexagonal world of the insect, the crustacean's eye is made up of thousands of tiny square particles, so they see the world in a tiny tile-like pattern. This freshwater shrimp has eyes perched on the sides of its head that are just like those of the crayfish, only smaller. Scallops, on the other hand, have rows of eyes which can only detect movement. Interestingly, the scallop will remain open to very slow or very quick motions. It only recognizes and therefore reacts to movement that matches the speed of its predators. Starfish have no real eyes but photosensitive cells on the end of their tentacles can not only distinguish light from dark, but also the direction of the light source. One of the weirdest looking animals in the sea is the conch. An overgrown cousin of the snail, the conch has eyes on the end of stalks. Not much is known about these strange eyes, but many believe they can probably detect motion well, but cannot see color or form. So when it detects the slightest movement, it wastes no time in making a hasty retreat beneath its shell. 
This adaptation allows the conch to peer out from under its large shell without exposing itself. Fish eyes, due to the shape of the cornea, are perfectly adapted to their underwater environment. Unlike the rounded cornea of land creatures, their cornea is flat. That's why we see so much better when we wear a mask underwater. We get fish vision. With stone cold eyes, one of the most feared and unpredictable creatures in the sea is the shark. Sharks have no eyelids only a nictitating membrane. This opaque lid is drawn over the eye for protection when necessary. This streamlined hunter, surprisingly, sleeps with eyes wide open. Unlike the shark, one of the most beloved creatures of the sea is a mammal and not a fish. The playful dolphin has vision similar to a human's above water, but superior to ours underwater. At least, that's what we think for now. But there's no telling what the future holds. Over the centuries, evolution has shown that where eyes are concerned, the possibilities are literally out of sight. The billions of eyes which view our world are as diverse as the creatures looking out through them. As only one of millions of species, we humans will probably never be certain of what other animals see. We may understand how the eye works, yet we still have not discovered how different brains interpret vision. But we can be sure of one thing, every animal sees exactly what it needs to. And it's also easy to see that the eyes have it. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, Enjoy our wild America.